Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson, BamaInsider.com. Welcome to the commitment watch of Tommy and James Brockemeyer. My name is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. In just a few minutes, we will talk with Andrew Bone about the commitment of Tommy and James Brockemeyer. I know it's a heavily awaited commitment from the twins out of Fort Worth, Texas. We're going to have Andrew Bone to break it all down. We are waiting right now on Tommy and James Brockemeyer. So as soon as those two go public with their announcements. We will talk about that right here on BamiInsider.com. Before we get going, I certainly want to um, get where you're coming from in the comment box. So definitely make sure and let me know where you guys are coming from. Uh, always excited to see where you guys are watching the videos from. Hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe. Um, we certainly appreciate that right here on BamiInsider.com. wanted to talk real quick about um, this particular class of 2021 because as you know alabama certainly picking up a ton of steam in recruiting i i think when we look back when we were in march um a lot of people were a little bit nervous you know they um they didn't really understand where this class was going to to go recruiting wise and everyone was kind of doubting nick saban but look at this class look at where alabama is right now as you can see they're number 12 in the rivals.com recruiting rankings i know they're ranked higher in other places point is this class has a lot of steam and we look at the commitments let's just look at the commitments that alabama has had in the month of july right kendrick blackshire big time pickup um, at the linebacker spot uh i mean have you seen the the images of this young man i mean th this dude is jack six foot two 250 pounds right there's images floating around on social media just showing how how yoked this dude is right and then just before that it was Kadarius calloway uh dallas turner and um just before that you have another Devonte smith and that was the end of end of june so uh this class overall fantastic class thumbs up for this class i i think it's a big time class and depending on you know, who else jumps on board, um, you know, within the next hour, within the next couple of days, you're going to see this class really jump up in the recruiting rankings. Let's look at those recruiting rankings right now on Rivals.com. And one thing that I, I always say, and you, you have to always look at, is when you look at these recruiting rankings, you have to look at the fact that you, you can't just look at the total number, right? Ohio State, as you see, has 18 commits. Tennessee has 23, Oregon has 17, Florida has 20. Yeah, that's great. But you have to look at the quality of the commitments that are committing to these teams. So what I always do is I like to sort these recruitings by the average ranking, right? And I think that shows a better picture of the quality of commitments that each team is picking up, right? You have Ohio State with 3.94 out of 18 commits so obviously that's a very good class and that's and when you look down the road this is if alabama is going to jump into that top two top three top one they're going to have to jump ohio state who has a fantastic class three five stars but remember rivals hasn't updated their recruiting rankings so um i think you know alabama is only going to jump up much more when rivals does update these recruiting rankings clemson 3.85 very good class, but as you've seen, there's a couple of decommitments from Clemson. It'd be interesting if Clemson can hang on to some of these guys as we go forward. You have Georgia, uh, 3.82, and then Alabama, 3.75. So um, depending on the Brockemeyers, if, th if they both jump on board, and then another pickup, let's say uh, the Alabama potentially gets Ferguson at the end of the week, you're going to have a really dynamic class in Alabama, and you're going to see Alabama continue to jump in those recruiting rankings. So what we're doing right now is we are waiting for um, Tommy and James Brockemeyer to announce their commitment. Let me know where you're coming from in the comment box. I'd certainly appreciate it. Remember, uh, we're going to have Andrew Bone on in just a minute, and we're going to talk about Tommy and James Brockemeyer. Um, I mean, big time, big time twins out of the Fort Worth Texas area. And I talked with Andrew earlier about this on our last show, um, talking about Alabama maintaining a pipeline in the state of Texas. And I think Alabama has done a great job with that. Um, you look at Jeff Banks, you look at Carl Scott, guys that are recruiting in the state of Texas, Pete Golding. Um, those guys have done a really good job maintaining relationships, developing you know that continuity with those coaches in Texas because Alabama has to keep that uh, a strong pipeline. As you know, Alabama has been doing absolute work in the state of Texas. And um, you know, it, it, and absolutely in Florida, right? Uh, let me see if I can bring that up again. And look at look at all these guys from Florida that Alabama has landed, right? 
and, and again, if you're just joining the show, uh, we're waiting on Tommy and James Brockmeyer. So uh, as soon as those two do announce their college commitment, we'll bring on Andrew Bone. We'll talk about what it means. So right now we're talking about this recruiting class and just how special this class is turning out to be, class 2021. But I wanted to talk about that class from Florida. Um, as you know, Ajay Hall has really steam headed this class, right? He's been that recruiter for this class. Uh, he's done a really good job. He's a four star. You got Christian Leary and then you have Ja'Cory Brooks. Three very impactful wide receivers to the class of 2021. Uh, you also have Dallas Turner. You have JC Latham. JC Latham, obviously, he's going to get pushed up to a five star. Um, so it, it, the, the amount of talent out of the state of Florida, just very dynamic. Um, two in state commits at this point, you have Anquin Barnes and Deontay Lawson. And, um, you know, it, it's a very special class. So um, in just a minute, we will have um, some news for you on Tommy and James Brockmeyer. Uh, thank you for joining the show. Please hit the thumbs up and like button. We appreciate um, you guys are coming from. It's always great to hear um, where you guys are coming from in the comment box. Please uh, support the show by giving us a thumbs up. And as I said, in just a few minutes, um, we will have Andrew Bone on here to talk about the commitments of Tommy and James Rockman. And I, I think I'm just getting um, word that one of them has committed. And it looks like we will have some news very soon. Looks like Andrew Bone is saying that James Brockemeyer has committed to the Alabama Crimson Tide. So breaking news right here that Alabama has landed the first Brockemeyer in James Brockemeyer. So big time get for the Crimson Tide. Um, I mean, you look at what James brings as a center. Um, we'll we'll have Andrew talk about it, but I have some, some clips right here. Um, this is actually James Brockemeyer. This is at a rivals camp. And you have to think back. This was I think a, a year ago. So, so think about how much he has progressed, um, you know, from just a year. I mean, this guy is coming in as a center. I think he's going to, um, you know, be someone who can contribute to Alabama. I talked with Andrew recently. Could he be a guard? Could he be a center? But it looks like he's just going to be a center. And, and you got to look at the lineage and how he's going to develop as a player um, as he continues to work with Kyle Flood. So big pickup for Alabama adding uh, James Brockemeyer, and we will await. Um, and let's see. Looks like we should be ready to go, and uh, we will have Andrew Bone. We're gonna bring in Andrew Bone to the show, and let's get him on. Bone, what's up, man? What's going on, Kyle? How are you? Uh, great, man. Big time news as um, Tommy and James Brockemeyer have both committed to the Alabama Crimson Tide. Here with Andrew Bone to break it out break it all down bone how big is this for alabama landing uh five star tommy and james uh i mean i mean tremendous pickup by the alabama crimson side well it's a huge pickup for alabama um you know especially at offensive line position big position of need in this year's recruiting class you know i said from the beginning of the year alabama really needed to get five offensive linemen uh on board in this class and uh with two today that gives them a total of three offensive linemen you know still going after some big name guys and we're going to see another uh big name announce his decision on sunday tj ferguson uh rivals 100 offensive lineman uh from the state of georgia so if alabama can get uh ferguson on board it's going to be a great weekend for alabama but getting you know two guys Two twins, uh, brothers, Tommy and James Brockmeyer on board today. Huge. I mean, especially when you look at, uh, you know, the family history with Texas. I mean, their grandfather played there. Their father played there. Father was an All-American and first-round draft pick at Texas. Uh, their older brother currently on the team. I mean, it, it's huge going into the state of Texas and and reeling in uh, two big-time players. I mean, you, you got to give a lot of credit to uh, the Alabama coaching staff, uh, Kyle Flood, Carl Scott, lead recruiters, uh, you know, for both of those guys. I mean, I think they just did a tremendous job. And from talking to uh, to Blake Brockermeyer uh, earlier this year uh, about Alabama and, and, you know, kind of their recruiting approach, uh, I think they were more impressed with the uh, with the with the new strength staff. Uh, you know, the time that the strength staff spent with them, you know, they're really big into working out. You know, they work out almost twice a day, uh, every single day, the Brockermeyer twins do with their father and, uh, you know, spending time 
uh, with the uh, with the new strength co- coaches on Zoom, uh, on the phone. I think that spoke volumes to them, and they really liked that a lot. And um, you know, obviously, the uh, the Alabama coaching t- staff did a tremendous job uh, recruiting them from start uh, to finish. Now, you know, does this mean that? You know, they may still take some visits because it's still kind of early on. I mean, you know, they weren't able to take, you know, get over, you know, get back to Texas, get back to LSU, get back to Auburn. I don't think so. I think their recruitment is completely finished. Um, you know, the original plan was for both of them to uh, to graduate early and enroll uh, in January. I'm not sure if that's still the case just because of uh, the whole COVID situation. They may decide to wait a little bit longer now, but uh, we'll check in on that. But huge, huge day for Alabama and getting the Brock Meyer twins. Uh, this has been a big month for Alabama, the month of July, uh, just getting several commitments. And I think that, you know, they're in line to get a few more uh, this month. Here with Andrew Bone of BamaInsider.com, breaking news as Tommy and James Brockmeyer have just committed to Alabama Crimson Tide. Um, Bone, I want to talk about um, – First of all, I want to talk about James. And, um, you know, we, we talked about him a little bit before. Um, he's a center, uh, 6'3", 275 pounds. Uh, talk about James a little bit and what you feel he adds to this particular class. And you feel and, and talk about where you see him fitting into the, to Alabama as, um, you know, he continues to work with Kyle Flood. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, James continues to get better every single year. You know, he came to Alabama's camp last summer. Him and Tommy were both in Tuscaloosa, and you know, he didn't get that offer from Alabama back then. And and he ends up, uh, you know, continuing to develop, continuing to get better, continuing to w- work on his craft. I think you know, last year he was about six foot three, about two hundred and and sixty pounds. Came to, uh, to Alabama's junior day earlier this year was close to about six foot four, two hundred seventy five pounds. So he's continuing to put on good weight. And like I said earlier, he he's working out with his dad uh, just about every single day. His dad's also uh, the offensive line coach at uh, All Saints Episcopal School. Uh, so you know he's getting some great training from him and uh, and his other coaches. So you know I really think he's going to end up playing center uh, at Alabama. I think that's mainly what he was recruited to play. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how he develops over the course of the next couple years uh but yeah i definitely think he's going to be a center prospect uh at the uh, the college level here with andrew bone of bamainsider.com as we continue to uh talk about james and tommy rockamire who have committed to alabama uh bone when we um when we look at Tommy Brockmeyer. He's a five-star on rivals i mean th- this kid has it all and we're going to show you some clips right now of Tommy Brockemeyer. And, and I mean, he's fantastic. I mean, I, I just, I, I really like what he brings to the table. Talk about Tommy Brockemeyer and where you see him fitting in. Yeah, he's a little bit bigger than, uh, than his uh, twin brother. You know, he, he's the, he got the, uh, uh, the genes of his father a little bit more being six foot six, uh, you know, about 290 pounds. I mean, he's a big kid. You know, he missed his entire junior season with a, uh, uh, with a, with labrum surgery. So, uh, unfortunately you don't have many junior clips, but, you know, as a sophomore and, and seeing him, uh, you know, during the, uh, during the spring of his sophomore year, I mean, you can really tell he's one of the, you know, premier offensive tackles in the country. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, great athleticism, great footwork, great hands. I mean, like I said, he's been working with his father for, for years. So he's a great technician, uh, really understands the game. I mean, you know, he's a, uh, you know, he's a guy that's, you know, the number 10 overall player in the country missing his entire junior season. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of high praise for him uh, from the rivals national team and the, uh, and the regional guys. So, you know, who knows, you know, We'll see if he can continue to climb up that, you know, top ten list. Maybe get it, you know, maybe into that top five, depending on, you know, how great his senior season is. Bone, when we look at the Brockmire brothers, obviously, you know, their their father uh, played at Texas. I believe you even told me his grandfather played at Texas. Their mom went to Texas. Um, you know, so much history with Texas. Why do you feel? And, and you you did a great job throughout this whole process, um, recruit talking talking recruiting about these guys. Why, why do you feel these two wanted to wanted to change? Was it they want to go to their own path? Was it Alabama's recruitment? Kind of talk about that a little bit. Well, there's no doubt there was a lot of pressure for them to go to Texas. I mean, they live in Fort Worth. They're hearing it from, uh, you know, from friends, from uh, from people in the community, from probably teachers, from coaches, from just about everybody. Hey, you need to go to Texas. Uh, you know, you can really help change the program around. But, um, you know, I think with Alabama, just, uh, you know, the way they develop offensive linemen, uh, you know, they're uh, unbelievable, um, you know, track record of putting guys into the NFL, um, especially on the offensive line. Yeah, I think that really spoke volumes. 
Williams, the relationship that they built with Kyle Flood uh, throughout the process. You know, they also have a great relationship with their lead recruiter, um, Carl Scott. But I think Nick Saban, you know, really did a great job in terms of, you know, doing a lot of FaceTime calls with those guys, you know, throughout the process. And, and like I said earlier, I think, uh, you know, the new strength staff also did a fantastic job, uh, you know, really, you know, making them feel comfortable and confident in, uh, in what they're going to be able to do with them once they get to Alabama. Bone, when we talk about, you know, the, this particular, you know, this set of linemen that Alabama has, we've talked about it before, uh, JC Latham, um, the James Brockemeyer, Tommy Brockemeyer, uh, talk about other offensive linemen that Alabama is actively recruiting because it looks like this particular class. And when we look at the offensive linemen can be truly, truly dynamic. No doubt about it. I mean, I think Alabama would love for this to be, you know, potentially the best offensive line class in, in the history of rivals. Uh, if, if they can, uh, you know, make it make it work that way. Uh, you know, they've got, you know, three really good offensive linemen committed, you know, right now in, in Latham and the Brockermeyer twins. Uh, you know, we're going to see a big one announced on uh, on Sunday and TJ Ferguson and you know, the number 43 overall player in the rivals 100. Um, you know, as of right now, feel very confident that the uh, choice is going to be Alabama. So that can give Alabama four offensive linemen uh, in this recruiting class. Now, we all know Marius Mims is going to be announcing his decision on August the 15th. Uh, he just put out a top six earlier this week, kind of his final six. And, you know, I really think it's down to, to two. I think it's Alabama or Georgia. You know, I, I don't really see him going anywhere else. I know, you know, Tennessee fans are very hopeful, but I just can't see him ending up in Knoxville. Can't see him ending up at Auburn. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be Alabama or Georgia. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of confidence on the Georgia side, and and rightfully so. He's been to Athens, you know, many many times. He has a, he has developed a great relationship with Matt Luke, uh, the new offensive line coach, in a short time. So you know, easily can go to Georgia, but uh, Alabama's right there in the mix. Uh, Kyle Flood, uh, Charles Kelly, those guys have done a great job recruiting him throughout this whole process. Um, you know, I know it may be uh, you know a little far fetched. If, see, you know, potentially Tommy Brockermeyer, J.C. Latham, and T.J. Ferguson, plus Amarius Mims all in one class. But I wouldn't rule it out just yet. I think Alabama's got a chance. Uh, they're certainly in, in in the mix, and, uh, you know, they would certainly love to add Amarius Mims uh, come the 15th. But I do think they get Ferguson this weekend. Um, you know, there's some other guys that are still out there that they're heavily recruiting. Uh, they're still in the mix who could, you know, let's say Amarius Mims ends up going to, uh, to Georgia. Uh, who else is still out there? Well, if you have uh, William Griffin Parker, a big offensive tackle out of Nashville, who's uh, received a lot of strong interest from Alabama and you know could potentially be in Alabama's class. Another offensive lineman who recently said you know, Alabama is probably going to get uh, at least one of his official visits is Eric Cade out of Denton, Texas. Uh, Jager Burton out of Kentucky, another guy who has Alabama uh, in his top five, top six, uh, and he'll probably visit Tuscaloosa uh, this fall if he's allowed to. He, I know he was he visited. Alabama last year uh, so he's got a lot of interest in uh, in the Crimson Tide so those are some of the, the top offensive line targets outside of uh, Mims and Ferguson that Alabama is still going after that they're still uh, you know really involved in at this time. Bone there, there's some more recruiting news as we continue to push through this busy weekend of what looks to be a big weekend for Alabama let's talk about um, Jaquincy McKinstry who's uh, set to announce is it a top three or top four and I think that's Sunday is that correct? Yeah, Kool Aid, uh, you know, the number one player in the state of Alabama from Pinson Valley. Uh, you know, one of the top defensive backs, you know, athletes in the uh, uh, you know in the country. So he's going to be announcing his top three. Our assumption is that it's going to be Alabama, Auburn, and LSU. Now, could he potentially surprise us and and throw in Clemson or Georgia? You know, possibly because those are in those schools are in his top five. But I think it's going to be Alabama, Auburn, and LSU. Um, you know, really fighting until the end for. Um, you know, for, for Kool-Aid. So we'll see. I don't, you know, a lot of people are thinking he could surprise and announce a decision uh, this weekend. I, I'm not necessarily seeing that. I, I think he's going to wait it out, um, take some visits this fall. Um, you know, those top three schools are coming after him just very hard and all want him as part of their recruiting class. So he may take a little bit more time uh, just to go visit those programs before making that decision. Let's talk um, just a few minutes about TJ Ferguson, who is also announcing on Sunday. Um, what's the latest on him? And um, it, it looks obviously uh, between Alabama and Georgia. Yeah, you know, uh, TJ came out and, uh, earlier and said uh, earlier this week and said his top four, Alabama, Georgia, Arkansas, Florida State. Don't see him going to Florida State or Arkansas. I, I think it's certainly between Alabama and Georgia. Um, I would say last summer, all the way up until about 
you know, February, March, I was strongly leaning Alabama with him. You know, I thought it was, uh, you know, almost a done deal that he was going to Alabama. You know, that was certainly going to happen. But over the last, you know, couple months, I would say really from about March until, you know, early July, it everyone was saying he's, he's it's a done deal. He's going to Georgia. Uh, you know, be surprised if he went anywhere else. But in my opinion, as of right now, I think he goes to Alabama. I think Alabama's, uh, you know, made him a top priority recruit from the, you know, from the get go. I always treated him like a top priority. And I, I know that he's got a great relationship with the coaching staff. Now, here is one thing I'll say. And, and I heard this this morning. It's, you know, remember that we're on Friday morning. We're a couple, two days away. Everybody's been making these predictions uh, about what he's going to do. I've heard as of this morning that he has not informed either coaching staff. Let's say, you know, at least he hasn't informed uh, Alabama or Georgia of his intentions just yet. So we're all making these predictions thinking that he's going to go to Alabama. And, you know, I think a lot of people see all these predictions coming in saying, oh, well, he's uh, he's probably told the coaching staff and they probably leaked it out uh, that he's going to Alabama, blah, blah, blah. But he hasn't informed any coaching staff of his decision just yet. This is a, you know, we feel like he's going to end up at Alabama. That's my prediction. But as of uh, as of this moment, he's yet to tell uh, you know, at least Alabama and Georgia of what he's going to do this weekend. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, like I said, I think he ends up picking Alabama. but um, you know, we could be in for a surprise come Sunday and, uh, you know, we'll certainly be watching pretty closely. He's going to be announcing that decision around 2 p.m. Uh, on uh, on Sunday, 2 p.m. Central. He's announcing 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. So uh, we'll have it completely covered at BamaInsider.com. Um, you know, you can watch our breakdown. We'll have, you know, all the interviews and, and all that good stuff that, uh, that you guys get to see um, whenever commitments happen. You know, a coach breakdown, a break, uh, an interview with a, a parent or uh, somebody close to him. And uh, obviously we'll, uh, we'll hope, hope to have an interview with, um, with, with TJ Ferguson as well. If he announces for the Crimson Tide. Hey, appreciate the super chats from Fletcher and Paul. Uh, sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much. Super chats certainly help um, our channel grow, help our staff grow. So thank you so much. Um, Super Chats, huge deal. So thank you very much. Bone, when we continue to talk about Tommy and James Brockemeyer, who have committed to Alabama today, um, from an overall impact analysis standpoint, when you're looking about the impact that these two will have on this continued class of 2021, um, how big is it to get these two on board in terms of an overall momentum standpoint for the rest of uh, the prospects that Alabama continues to target moving forward? I mean, it, it seems like Alabama has so much momentum. Um, it, it, it looks like they're uh, moving up in the rivals recruiting ranking. Someone just said, I think there's six right now. Um, so how much from an impact standpoint do does landing these two um, contribute to this class? Well, it's huge. I mean, you know, like I said earlier, it's been a big month for Alabama so far. I mean, you know, July the first, they they landed, you know, Dallas Turner, and you know, since then they picked up, you know, a few more commitments, and uh, it's been a it's been a great ride for Alabama this month, and it's going to continue. I mean, I, I think they, like I said, I think they end up picking up T.J. Ferguson um, this weekend, uh, next weekend, uh, uh, Damon Payne. The uh, you know one of the top defensive tackles in the country from Michigan's going to be announcing his decision. I feel like Alabama is going to uh, land his commitment as well. So it could be a great month, one of the an, a historic month for Alabama on the road. Just a number of players that that have been able, able to uh, go ahead and make their decisions. So we'll see what happens in August. I mean, I was kind of thinking the Brocker Myers were going to wait until August. I knew that they were going to announce before the season started. I had talked to their father uh, about two weeks ago, and then he kind of hinted to me that it was coming soon. It probably wasn't going to happen this month, but uh, but it was going to happen soon. But then uh, uh, Blake Brocker Meyer texted me on Wednesday night. Kind of gave me the news that it was uh, that it was happening this week. So uh, I, I know that the Alabama coaching staff just has to be uh, tickled to death about this commitment. And uh, you can see, well, you know, their reactions on Twitter. Um, you know, all the coaches, you know, posting uh, gifts and stuff like that. They're extremely excited. I think they're excited about uh, you know not just the Brock and Myers, but the the direction this class is going. You know, everybody was you know so doom and gloom earlier this year because Alabama had you know one commitment in the month of April, and uh, nobody was sure what was going to happen with this class and we kept telling everybody be patient be patient their top targets are still out there um you know there's nothing really to worry about until their top targets start committing elsewhere and when they their top targets started committing they were committing to alabama so it's been a great ride alabama's in my opinion is going to end up end up challenging for the number one overall spot uh when all said and done i think they're going to be in the top five 
uh, potentially even top three uh, in the next couple of weeks. I mean, we'll just have to see uh, how high it can climb. But uh, but I, I would not rule out Alabama as potentially um, you know, fighting for that number one overall spot uh, here in the upcoming months. Alex on uh, on our super chat. Thank you so much, Alex. He's like, I'm sure Bone is happy to be, you know, that you're going to be stop asking about the Brockemeyer brothers and when they're going to commit. Right. It seemed like it was something that we tracked for such a long time. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, the Brocker Myers and Blackshire, um, you know, now I don't have to answer those questions. It feels pretty good. Um, you know, I remember a few years ago, the most asked about questions were, um, and, and they probably in my entire life was, uh, where is, uh, where's Ben Davis and Mac Wilson going to go to college? I mean, we heard that every single day up until they announced their decision. And then, you know, they end up committing to, uh, to Alabama, both on signing day. So we had to wait all the way until signing day for both of those guys. But luckily the Brocker Myers and Blackshire went ahead and announced today. Of course, now we have, uh, we still have Kool-Aid. So Kool-Aid is still going to be the most probably asked about recruit on, uh, on the Bama Insider recruiting board and on our, uh, and on our YouTube shows. Bone, um, I, we'll, we'll get back to the Brock and Myers one more time before we before we do close out. Um, but I wanted to to ask you, Bone, and um, Bradley Moore is asking on, on our chat. He's asking about Kamar Wheaton, and I bring that up because he's another um, you know talented prospect in the state of Texas. What what's kind of the latest on him, and can you update everyone on Kamar Wheaton? Yeah, you know Kamar Wheaton, uh, number one running back in the country. You know from Texas. I, it's funny because I asked Sam Spiegelman, who covers Texas for Rivals, uh, about Kamari uh, yesterday, and uh, he said he was hoping to get an update with him uh, here pretty soon. Uh, he keeps things very, very quiet, very tight-lipped, and the, I think one of the reasons is is because he's not in any rush to make a decision. He's wanting to – he just kind of let this play out. He knows he's the best running back in the country. He knows everybody has a spot for him, uh, and he's just kind of letting it play out. He, he wants to take some official visits before making that decision. Now, the schools that we – continue to hear most about with Kamar Wheaton, Alabama, LSU, Oklahoma, Texas. Now, in my opinion, it's probably going to end up coming down between Oklahoma and Texas. Oklahoma has felt very confident about him for a while. Texas, the in-state school, but you know, now that Alabama has the Brockmeyer twins on board, I'm sure they're going to try to recruit uh, him just like they're probably going to try to recruit Jalen Milrow, who's currently committed to, uh, to Texas as well, the uh, Rivals 100 quarterback at Alabama's continuing to pursue pursue. So I'm sure the Brockermeyer twins are going to try to uh, try to recruit those guys. But, you know, I wouldn't expect anything from Kamar Wheaton anytime soon. I think we're going to you know, see that recruitment, you know, last several more months. Um, Bone, I, I wanted to ask you as we round this out, and thank you so much for everyone for joining this live coverage of James and Tommy Brockermeyer and their announcement to Alabama. Um, Bone, what did what did the Brockermeyer's father tell you that really went into this uh, process and, and how much did did Kyle Flood play a role into this and how much did Nick Saban play a role into the recruitment of Tommy and James Brockemeyer? Yeah, you know, I I feel kind of bad for Blake today because you know being a uh, being a Texas Longhorn, being in the the, the Texas Ring of Fame, uh, I forget you know whatever they call it. I mean, he's one of the best you know, Texas players of all time. Uh, he's probably taking some heat from uh, from, from some Texas people today about you know the, the twins going to Alabama, but you know what. At the same time, he doesn't care. He wants what's best for uh, for Tommy and James. Uh, he kind of said that from day one, never really uh, pressured them to go anywhere. Now, in my first conversation with him, uh, you know, several months ago, I got the impression that uh, he kind of – he didn't say this, but I got the impression that he wanted his sons to go to Alabama. And I, I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, just the, you know, the development, the way that they can produce at Alabama, the way that uh, they can be coached at Alabama. Um, you know, obviously the history of, uh, you know, the offensive linemen recently have been, you know, sent off to the NFL um, and have developed and become all Americans. I think all that speaks volumes to them. And uh, and like I said earlier, the, the new strength staff, I think they, they played a very vital, important role in recruiting both of those guys to Alabama. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining our show today. Uh, James and Tommy Brockemeyer have committed to Alabama Crimson Todd. For more recruiting coverage, go to BamaInsider.com. And before we go, um, I actually wanted to show you real quick how easy it is to get uh, 30 days free to BamaInsider.com. I have a short commercial for you to watch starting right now. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. This is how to get free 30 days on BamaInsider.com. First thing you got to do, go to BamaInsider.com and click on the top banner. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to create an account, email, username, password. The second thing you're going to do is confirm your subscription. 
make sure that the promo code is entered right here. It says promo successful roll tide. The third thing you're going to do is enter your credit card information. It has to be valid. And don't worry, you're going to get that 30 days free. As you can see, once you've added a credit card, you're going to get the promo code. As you can see right here, it says $0. After that, you got to make sure and cancel within that 30 days if you don't want to be charged that $9.95. But hopefully you're happy with all the coverage on BamaInsider.com so you won't need to cancel. Once you're a premium subscriber of BamaInsider.com, you can access Andrew Bones recruiting board. You can jump on the Talk of Champions message board and have a great time with thousands of Alabama Crimson Tide football fans. We hope to earn your business at BamaInsider.com. All right, so there you have it. If you want free 30 days to BamaInsider.com, now is a great time. Join the, you know, website with thousands of Alabama Crimson Tide football fans get the news from Andrew Bone. I mean, this guy, Bone's been on fire. I mean, days before. Don't get, don't wait for the news to drop. You can get the news well before, well in advance from Andrew Bone. Um, we hope that we earn your business at BamaInsider.com. We hope you've liked our show today. Thank you so much to all our super chats today. That was fantastic. We certainly appreciate it. We want to see more of that going forward. Uh, certainly um, helps out the staff in more ways than you know. So thank you very much for watching our show gigantic day for the Alabama Crimson Tide with Tommy and James Brockemeyer jumping on board. Stick around and follow our coverage because this looks to be a gigantic weekend for the Alabama Crimson Tide. For Andrew Bone, Kyle Henderson, thank you very much for watching today on BamaInsider.com. We'll catch you soon. Tons of coverage right now at BamaInsider.com. Catch up with you guys soon.